Hi, good morning all. I am Vivek Yadav, working at Samsung Semiconductor India R&D. Okay. Hi, good morning all. I am Vivek Yadav, working at Samsung Semiconductor India R&D. Okay. Let's begin. I welcome you all to the presentation on CAN deep dive into board rate and error handling model. This presentation provides a great introduction to the fundamentals of CAN controller area network. I will be uh, touching all the important topics uh, required by a programmer uh, to understand the CAN protocol as we know it is used in uh, uh, industrial automation controls and many, many more applications. Let's uh, begin and move on to the next slide. So these are the topics we are going to cover in this presentation. We will be covering the basic uh, introduction of the CAN protocol and its features and bus details and we will talk about the real time application in the automotive and the uh, aerospace industry and uh, we will go through the Linux CAN subsystem includes uh, protocol configuration, bit timing and uh, message frame. In the end, we will discuss about the error handling model and gives the basic idea about the user space tool with the applications. And uh, let's move on to the next slide and start with the introduction of the CAN protocol. So CAN is short for a controller area network. It is an uh, electronic communication bus defined by the ISO 11898 standard. Basically, the standards defines how communication happens, how the wiring is configured and how messages are constructed. Uh, let's talk about the CAN bus here. CAN bus is a two wire serial differential bus over which all the devices connected via trans receiver. And uh, in the uh, given diagram, we can notice uh, we have a CAN uh, bus with the two wire serial differential uh, bus uh, one is can H and the can low that is can high and can low and the nodes are connected via trans receiver to the bus so uh, it is a broadcast type of bus the broadcast refers here transmitting a packet uh, on the bus and that will be received by every can device into the network that means uh, all the nodes can hear all the transmission when we say node in this presentation that means can device and uh, can node or can we can say can node to understand more about the broadcast here uh, let's take an example of a, a very common example of a communication uh, we have a multiple can devices on to the bus and suppose one of the node uh, broadcast the message on the bus and then all the CAN devices will invariably pick all the messages frame. And uh, like uh, every node on the bus capture all the traffic of the CAN bus. Now here the question came like how do we differentiate the message uh, uh, belongs to a particular node or not. Now here comes the feature of a CAN protocol called CAN filters. The CAN hardware provides local filtering so that interesting CAN node device reacts only on the intended messages only. Let me explain about the little bit about the filters in depth. CAN hardware have a number of filter registers. Uh, those filter registers on trigger during the CAN initialization with the predefined uh, identifier called uh, message ID. And when the node receive any message frame, then can not search the receiver message identifier or called ID in the predefined filter register configuration. And if the ID matches the uh, filter configuration or the ID configured in the filter, then the message will be stored in the FIFO and the uh, uh, receiver buffers and go for the uh, go to the application layer. And if that doesn't match with the filter, then it will be discarded. So as a uh, we will discuss this identifier term in the later slide. Okay, and now as we have discussed, can message is a uh, can is a message based protocol. Let me tell you uh, the difference between the address based protocol and the message based protocol. In short, in an address based uh, message protocol, uh, the data and the packet 
data packet or the frames uh, contains the address of the device for which message is intended and uh, in a message uh, based protocol uh, every message is uh, is identified a predefined uh, uh, id in in case of can frame we can say called identifier rather than a address and the can bus supports a uh, bitwise uh, arbitration to control the arbitration or it's like a CSMA supports a CSMA uh, career sense mode action. And uh, let's move on to the next slide. So, so here are the some of the features of the CAN. That's why CAN is widely used because of its uh, many features. It offers uh, excellent error detection and error handling mechanism, which provides a high rel highly reliable transmission. And uh, it is very flexible because uh, hundreds of on scan nodes can be uh, easily connected or disconnected uh, uh, at a time. And uh, it supports uh, multi-master communication. So every node on the bus can access the bus anytime and supports uh, 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 broadcast-based message communication. So. Uh, Broadcast, I have already explained that means like uh, we have a node can communicate to the single node or the multiple node or can send the message to all the nodes connected over the bus. And it is a very reliable, uh, like we can say, very low cost effective because only we, we, are, we are having only two wires for uh, to communicate uh, between hundreds of CAN devices. So it is uh, very cost effective as compared to the uh, other networks uh, for like uh, those use point to point communication between two nodes only. So uh, that's it and we will go further. So uh, let me go through the bus details can support two standards ISO 11893 and ISO 11893. 8982 both the bus have different features one supports the fault tolerance and other supports the speed maximum speed can be achieved according to the standard is 1 mbps but uh, some of the can controllers uh, uh, supports higher speed are 5 mbps on can xt that is uh, can of these goes uh, developed by the porsche uh, that is for flexible data and uh, that like uh, Actually, what is CAN FD and why it is developed? I will tell you. Like, CAN FD is a flexible data bit rate, and because it supports it supports uh, 64 bytes of data, and we can change the baud rate during the uh, uh, transmission of the data. So it is like a flexible data bit rate. So now let me move. Uh, speed is inversely uh, proportional to the length of the bus uh, or the propagation delay. And we can see here uh, 1 Mbps can be achieved at the 40 meter length. And this is because uh, the arbitration scheme requires the signal must be able to propagate uh, at the most remote node back again before it is sampled. And the last thing is bus uh, should be terminated by the 120 ohm register. The termination uh, register serves two purposes here, remove the signal uh, reflections at the end of the bus and ensures that uh, uh, bus gets connected uh, correct DC level. So, and some of the uh, examples we have given as the speed varies the, with the length of the CAN bus. We can see, uh, okay, six uh, kilometer of distance we are having the 10 MB, 10 kb per second and 125 kb per second for 500 meter and 100 meters we can support up to k uh, 500 kbit per second uh, let me move on to the next slide so can is widely used in today's world almost in all the industry well known in the automotive aviation uh, building automation medical equipment marine automation and the navigation i think it has a vast uh, vast usage uh, in the current industry. So let me move on to the next slide. Can uh, in automotive and the aerospace industry. First, uh, to understand the can in the automotive industry, first uh, let's talk about the history of the can. Almost uh, every vehicle contains a number of electronic 
devices that shares information with one another let's take an example of automobile's transmission control system in the uh, autonomous car so what happens uh, it automatically changes a uh, vehicle's gear in relation to its uh, speed by using uh, data from the engine control unit or the various sensors in the systems so uh, all the data come at the real time uh, before can was used in the vehicle each electronic devices was uh, connected to another via wires or more specifically we can say point to point wiring uh, this uh, worked effectively uh, enough but uh, when the functions were uh, we can say basic as the time goes and the automotive automotive industry advanced uh, uh, one of the major problem for the automotive was uh, linking the ecus or of different devices uh, via point to point uh, wiring because uh, a single car a automotive car uh, can have uh, i think 60 to 70 ecus connected and this is very difficult to manage to via wire to wire communication and the uh, a major problem was uh, the real time information could be exchanged the can protocol was designed to address this problem basically because a uh, can bus is a serial bus a wire network interface supports uh, real time broadcasting of message here we can refer this picture as a point to point uh, connection between uh, uh, devices so if we uh, we can see that engine control power windows uh, power lock air bag all are connected to the dashboard wire point to point connection so like uh, if i am saying that air conditioner it depends on the uh, temperature sensor from the some other electronic ecu then it has to first send the data to the dashboard then dashboard sends to the data to the air conditioner so this is not a, uh, a basic uh, a good way to Uh, it's not a real time communication basically so let me move on to the next slide so can in automotive industry uh, that is uh, spain okay uh, here we will take a example of a uh, can bus so as we can see there is a serial wire can bus and the uh, active suspension power windows uh, engine control air bag air condition power lock all the ecus all the electric Uh, can devices are connected over a single wire and uh, and it uh, like uh, uh, this is a very uh, like uh, at the conclusion we can say here is broadcasting a message uh, to the number of nodes at a real time is greater advantage over point to point communication because it reduces the wire connection and overall complexity of the system and that uh, is clearly uh, visible here and it supports the uh, it supports the real time uh, data transfer transfer also so that is the example of the automotive industry let's uh, move on to the uh, next slide so here this is the example of a linux can subsystem how we are communicating from the application to the driver level and how we are configuring configuring the can uh, protocol its support rate and uh, link up and link down okay start let's look at look at uh, uh, on this architecture so we have a user space application can have, have the can util uh, okay and application will communicate with the network layer through the system call interface and network layer uses the socket can uh, which provides uh, a socket interface to user space application which builds upon the linux uh, network layer only can network device helps to set up the can network subsystem it uh, uh, creates the uh, it, um, creates and set up the link and uh, calculate the board rate configuration for the can and do the bit timing register calculations after this uh, a can net device uh, uh, interact with the can subsystem here we can see and uh, with the platform driver and the uh, can driver so do the can frame 
configuration and uh, do the all the transmit and receive uh, operations with the hardware and with the external devices scan devices so this is all about the scan architecture and uh, we can say as a linux scan subsystem let's move on to the next slide so now uh, we have taken an example here from the bosch scan uh, amp can actually uh, that is the uh, we will this is the can device node so the given example uh, i have already told this is a bosch amp can device node example okay uh, first parameter here is uh, compatible and uh, this refers the uh, owner and the driver name and the second property is the reg reg games so the this defines the register and the message ram based address with the proper size and uh, third is the interrupts uh, what all are the interrupts we are using and the interrupt numbers and uh, there are two clocks we are using here one is the h clock that is can be high clock and uh, one is c clock okay and uh, these are the peripheral clocks will be used to configure the board rate configuration for the can protocol and the uh, second last is the uh, bosch uh, amram configuration bsg so this is uh, uh, important uh, to understand here for the like because uh, we can say message ram configuration data is uh, multiple amcan instances can share the message ram and each element uh, uh, number in message ram is also configured so this property is telling uh, how the shared or the private message ram are used by the amcan controllers like uh, am like if we see the parameters of the message ram configuration r128 64 64 these are the uh, like sizes uh, of the allocation of a memory for the transmitter buffers transmitter pfos receiver buffers the receiver pfos and the filters so we have to uh, we have to create a buffer size into the message ram to uh, make the transmit tra transmission and the reception possible to save the messages from the actual hardware buffers to the message ram so at the last uh, parameter is the can trans receiver and uh, grant and uh, we are setting a maximum bit rate of 500k so can will be configured with the 500k port rate so let's uh, move on to the next slide okay uh, here we'll go through the can fit timing configuration uh, it is a very important uh, topic in can configuration uh, let's understand the basics in need of uh, 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 can bit timing every uh, if you see uh, every connectivity protocol SCI UART I2C all has to be configured with uh, some port rate but uh, there is a way to configure the port rate here in CAN protocol if you want to configure the port rate configuration so you have to do the bit timing register configuration for that so like a bit is divided or divided into multiple segments uh, first is a synchronization segment second is a propagation third is a phase segment the fourth one is a phase segment two so these are all the segments that resides in a single bit and all those four segments you have to configure into the control register of the can protocol to set the board rate okay and uh, as we can see uh, okay uh, now uh, there are total number of time quantas concepts here like uh, let me go through this uh, layout of a layout of a bit i will explain about what is this uh, sync segment and the uh, uh, propagation delay and all those things so first the synchronization segment uh, which always is one uh, quantum long and is used for the synchronization of the clock and uh, second one is the propagation delay that depends on the actually cable or the wire we are using and the distance and uh, the worst case propagation delay is uh, twice between uh, the two furthest nodes and the phase segment like phase segment one and phase segment two will be 
shortened or lengthened if necessary to make the cloak in the spring the bus levels are sampled at the border between phase segment and the phase segment phase let me uh, explain this uh, bit uh, what is actually how to configure the bit rate so a single bit uh, uh, is called as a nominal uh, scan bit time and uh, it this uh, bit time is divided into uh, as we told uh, sing propagation plus phase, phase segment plus segment two so this will be the addition of the all the segments and if you are calculating time for all the time quanta so you have to calculate the uh, you have to multiply the uh, one time quanta time that is pq and that pq is calculated equals to bolt rate free scalar plus one uh, multiplication factor into uh, one clock period time of a peripheral clock that is one divided by clock frequency and uh, so this will be total number of quanta and uh, in the next slide we will see uh, how to configure the control registers and uh, what is the concept of the synchronization so this is the uh, clock synchronization means uh, adjusting the phase error in the signal uh, and uh, we can say the maximum value of the bit time adjustment are termed as synchronization jump bit that is called uh, sjw here and this SJW will be configured in the uh, control register of the scan protocol during the configuration. So there are two types of synchronization here. Uh, one is uh, a hard synchronization and uh, uh, one is uh, resynchronization. Hard synchronization means that is well known that is performed by the hardware only like it's when it occurs on the recessive to dominant transition of the start bit the bit time is restarted from that edge only so resynchronization occurs when a bit edge doesn't occur within the synchronization segment in a message that depends on the phase error in the signal but uh, this sjw what we will configure in the control register will be used uh, to adjust that sync uh, actually now okay and now we'll see how to calculate the bold rate and configure the clock uh, register we need to configure here four segments uh, one is uh, brp pf segment one p segment two and uh, sjw here so this is uh, uh, we have taken an example of a bolt rate 500k and we are will be using peripheral clock here 42 uh, megahertz frequency that is a peripheral clock so number of uh, quantas will be using as uh, equals to 14 in which we have phase segment one that is a uh, addition of propagation segment plus phase segment one equals to 11 so we will be using segment two as a two so if you count the total number of segments here sync plus propagation plus phase segment one plus uh, phase segment two so it is coming 13 but i have told in the earlier slide that the sync segment will always be one so 13 plus one equals to four so this 14 is the total number of uh, time quantas and we have to calculate first what is the time period of one time quanta that equals to time quanta equals to brp plus one into one clock period time of a peripheral clock so when we calculate this then we will put all these factors in the board rate formula that is one upon nominal bit time and nominal bit time equals to this brp into total time quantas that is 42 megahertz divided by 6 into 14 and we will get the port rate equals to 500k so this is the uh, port rate configuration for the uh, scan protocol let's move on to the uh, linux can be timing structure example so this structure is a uh, uh, defines uh, what are all the uh, configuration you will be storing during the programming of a CAN configuration or CAN protocol. Uh, first one is the bit rate. What will be the bit rate? What is the sample point of the CAN bit? Uh, what will be the time quanta in nanosecond? What is the propagation segment? Phase segment one, phase segment two, synchronous time bit, jump uh, bit in time quantas and uh, the last one is the 
BRT Bowdrey Street trailer will be used there. Uh, let's uh, move on to the next slide. So, as uh, we have uh, discussed uh, in the CAN introduction, CAN is a, a message based protocol, and this uh, there are four different uh, messages types. Uh, we can say that frame we have multiple types of types of frame and these all the frame serves different purposes and for the different uh, user so uh, let's move on to the type of message frame directly uh, first one is the data frames as name suggests that is uh, that is used to transmit the data over the bus actually second one is the uh, remote frame here so remote frame is the a remote transmission request to the uh, a particular node that is uh, actually a signal like i am giving a i am sending a signal then uh, a device or a node will respond back to the signal or will be using for other purposes that depends on the uh, application only so uh, now we have a error frame here so error frame uh, is uh, actually something like when i am uh, transmitting a message frame and that message frame is corrupted because of some uh, failure happen on to the bus then uh, the receiver on the node they will actually uh, uh, capture the errors and generate the error frame on to the bus so that will uh, be very helpful for the transmitter to understand actually what happens on to the bus during the transmission of the bus by reading the error flags of the error frame and accordingly it will take uh, appropriate actions like uh, it will retransmit the message or we can say it will discard the message according to the uh, uh, error flags it can be errors can be crc and uh, acknowledgement uh, frame errors that we will discuss in the next slide in the error handling model will be covering all these errors uh, and how to capture all these errors let's uh, move on to the uh, next slide here so uh, let's uh, then now we will take the example of uh, scan message frame and we will take first uh, as a example scan data frame so that data frame or the frame is divided into actually four segments uh, first one is the arbitration field second is the data field third is the crc field and the fourth one is the acknowledgement slot this arbitration field uh, means what is this actually arbitration field uh, which determines the priority of a message when two or more nodes are con uh, contending for the bus like uh, uh, like there are multiple nodes onto the bus like hundreds of nodes on the bus and all the nodes are trying to access the bus but this arbitration field decides who will get the bus based on the uh, like uh, uh, so because it supports the uh, uh, CSM, so according to that you will get the bus. And uh, this arbitration contains the field uh, identifier called uh, IDE. And uh, let's give you, uh, give you uh, some idea. Scan frame is divided into two parts. Like uh, one is the standard frame that is scan 2.0 A, and other one is the scan 2.0 B that is. Uh, 29 bit identifier and both the message frames are different by only uh, one thing that is called 11 bit identifier is used here and the extended extended identifier use 29 bit identifier other than that all the bits will be same and uh, the control bits or the other bits will be ide that is called uh, uh, identifier extension okay that uh, will tell you it is used to specify the frame format actually standard frame or the extended frame and the other thing is the remote rtr bit that is the remote transmission request request it defines whether it's a data frame or the remote frame as we have explained that the remote frame is just a signal to the uh, destination node or data frame is the uh, we are transmitting a data to the or the information to the particular node or, or the or the bus we can say because it's a it's a broadcast way of communication 
so actually we didn't go through the term identifier so uh, based on the identifier only the receiver decides whether a message is uh, relevant to node or not like every message has this identifier uh, this is a unique number and that unique number is configured uh, during the can initialization in the filter register configuration and this id matches when a message can send and the receiver takes this id and compares with the filter if the id and the filter in the filter uh, this id matches then uh, the then the frame will be uh, shifted to the key code otherwise it will be discarded that is what the purpose of the identifier here so let's move on to the uh, data field data field is a uh, 0 to 8 bytes uh, the last uh, one is the uh, cr second last one is the crc that is uh, cyclic redundancy check contains the checksum of application data for error detection that is for the data integrity whether the data is uh, received uh, uh, properly or uh, that or any corruption happens acknowledgement bit is uh, when data is received correctly then this uh, up the acknowledgement bit will be set that defines that trans uh, transmission of a frame was uh, successful let's uh, uh, move on to the uh, next slide okay sorry uh, okay we have uh, now we will have we will see the different uh, uh, message frames here and i will explain all these frames okay so we have a one, we have a data frame that is uh, having two frame format frame format that is standard can frame format and the extended can frame so that uh, difference is the 11 bit and the 29 bit identifier as we have already discussed and we will see this in the diagram that is the 11 bit identifier and that here is the 29 bit identifier for the extended can otherwise all the other control bits uh, and uh, data field and the uh, crc and the acknowledgement float all those things will be same for the data frame so now second one is the uh, we have a remote frame so this uh, remote uh, the purpose of the remote frame is uh, to seek permission for the transmission of a data from another node uh, actually uh, this this remote frame doesn't have a dlc no data length code because the, the frame is not intended for the uh, data so there is no data field here only the signal only the rtr bit is set so that defines okay i am seeking for a uh, some data or i am sending a signal to you so other than that uh, other fields will be same arbitration or the crc and the acknowledgement then we have an error frame when on um, when any node on the canvas received uh, error on the bus it will generate the error frame to on the bus to notify all the nodes over the bus that uh, that frame was corrupted or there is a error onto the bus it will set some of the error flag that defines what happens actually in the last communication over the bus so it will uh, immediately or the detecting node what happens when a, a node detects the error frame so it will immediately abort the transmission and send uh, frame sign a frame consistently on the error flag but uh, and uh, like it will whether it will retransmit the frame or either it will discard the frame so uh, so let's move on to the next slide so linux can frame structures so, so we have taken an example of, of two can frames one is can frame that is for the can standard and the can extended frame both and one is the can fd can flexible data frame let me explain you what is uh, this uh, can fd frame here uh, flexible can data was developed by the course to transmit data faster than the one mbps speed uh, the payload the data field is now up to 64 bytes long both the frame structure are similar except uh, the uh, control field that is called flags here so for uh, for to differentiate between can fd and can standard frame we can set the uh, fdf bit and the bit rate which bit during the communication during the frame communication or during the 
uh, can uh, in configuration that's how we differentiate between the uh, flexible data frame and the normal uh, standard extended data frames so other than that we have a frame uh, can id uh, parameter and the dlc and uh, we can say uh, the data a byte of data and uh, id id bits and other uh, control paddings are there so it will be this will be similar only so let's move on to the next slide so now uh, we will discuss the can error framework in the uh, can protocol and uh, it is a very interesting topic and it's uh, that's why can is so famous uh, because of error handling model uh, this aims here to detect error handle handling aims here to detect the uh, uh, error in the messages appearing on to the canvas uh, so that the transmitter and receiver can take uh, uh, appropriate actions based on the error flags and retransmit the message error handling is uh, like uh, is very important in a, uh, we can say in critical task uh, like uh, if i take an example of a automobile vehicle uh, let's suppose uh, and uh, any any uh, car uh, that uh, got sorry and if, let's take an example of a car uh, if it got hit in the accident uh, so accident control system uh, sends a uh, signal to the airbags uh, to open the airbags so suppose that message fails and then protocol so this message shouldn't be failed because that is that message is having the higher priority that should be reached to the destination so now the Error, error framework comes like can protocol has the capability to capture the errors and retransmit the message again within the microsecond and shows that uh, signals should uh, transmit uh, successfully so now we will see what happens uh, when error is captured actually so uh, when the, the discovering node will uh, uh, raise error flags then that's when the bus traffic the other nodes will detect the error flag and take appropriate action like discard the message or the uh, retransmit the message okay we have a different ways of detecting error here like first one is uh, bus monitoring so uh, what is the meaning of bus monitoring is uh, uh, the transmitter on the CAN bus monitors the transmitted signal level if the bit level actually read differ from the one transmit a bit error is signaled uh, that means like if i'm if a node is writing one to the bus when we read the signal back it should be one only otherwise it will be discarded frame is will be discarded and and the arbitration will be failed that is a bit monitoring method second one is uh let's talk about the bit stopping means that when a five consecutive bits are uh, sensed then one extra bit will be transmitted to uh, opposite level to be transmitted by a node it will be a six bit opposite level to the outgoing bit stream the receiver will remove the extra bit uh, when it acknowledges that uh, uh, stuffing so third one is the acknowledgement bit that is uh, the nodes of the bus uh, that correctly receive a message are expected to send back an acknowledgement to the uh, transmitter okay i have received the frame successfully the last one is the uh, cyclic redundancy check uh, that is for the integrity of the data so when the different prc in the message okay a node detects a different prc what is received and what is calculated then it will uh, generate a prc error so these are the all about the uh, can uh, uh, errors so let me move on to the next uh, slide and we will see the can uh, error confinement uh, methods so a can load uh, let let me discuss about the can error confinement method here let's take an a simple example to understand suppose a node a starts out in a error active state so every node uh, starts into the active state only that means uh, the tep and the rec uh, will be uh, less than equal to 127 so that is called uh, let I will explain you what is TEP and RC, REC. Uh, these, these are the counters registers in the CAN protocol. The TEP means transmitter error counter and receiver error counter. 
these counters are incremented or decremented when a uh, scan node encounters an error now node a transmit a frame uh, let's suppose a transmit a frame and it fails then each time what happens that transmitter error counters increment or the uh, uh, counter by a then when the pvc is uh, and the rec is uh, greater than the 127 so it uh, uh, jumps into the error passive state and then if that error counter goes above the 255 number then it goes to the uh, bus offer okay so now when there is when you are in the active state or the passive state you will transmit the error flags accordingly that for example if you are in the active node if error active node detects the error will transmit the active error flags only so this is how these uh, nodes transmit the error error flags okay so there is a there are two ways of a scan node will come out from the bus so when it enters the bus so that is important uh, so uh, when it when a node is enters the bus so first thing it will not uh, participate uh, in any of in any of the uh, scan bus communication so uh, so now how to remove from the uh, scan from the bus so there are two ways uh, one is uh, enable the automatic bus of management bit uh, during the CAN node configuration, this bit uh, automatically generate bus of recovery messages over the bus. And second one is the manually uh, uh, generate the message on the bus. Uh, recovery message contains uh, 128 occurrence of the 11 consecutive recessive bits. And the status now that there are two status bits are there: bus of status and the warning status. These status are will be available in the CAN controller status service, and also you can uh, have the uh, interrupt for uh, that so it will be uh, easy to monitor the uh, bus so uh, sorry so let me move on to the uh, next slide so here uh, we have an example of a linux uh, scan error framework structured one is the scan device state that means we are defining here the can status or can state so that is a one is the bus errors, error warning state, error passive state, bus office state, and the arbitration loss and the restart. All controllers will be restarted. Okay, and this is a switch case when a, a receiver, a, a receiver node received the error frames, and it there will be some there will be a one switch case in the application in the driver in the CAN driver that defines which what what will what was the error you found on the CAN bus accordingly we will uh, we will uh, uh, debug the error or we will uh, print this message over the uh, control or the or passes to the application so we can understand who this error uh, we got this error onto the bus these are the form error acknowledgement error and we have discussed bit zero error and the bit one error these are the mo bit monitoring error actually and last one the CRC error okay let me move on the next slide so these are the reasons uh, uh, the bus can failure so can bus can be failed with the various reasons uh, can high and uh, because we have two wires and those two wires have the uh, actually uh, a, ba uh, a basic uh, voltage level uh, a fixed voltage level then if these voltage level disturb then bus will be failed that you will not be able to achieve that board rate board rate can be changed or the signal can be discarded or the propagation delay will be increased now this how this happened is can l be shorted when can high will be shorted or the battery voltage is problem uh, voltage because hardware has the voltage level and it will be shorted with the can high or the can low bus and the last uh, can high and the can low interrupted at the same location that means uh, you are can high and the can low are uh, connected to each other or some short happens and last one is the uh, termination register if you have uh, if you are not uh, 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 terminated uh, can bus is not terminated with the 120 ohm register so it will be like uh, not uh, uh, dc level will be uh, not be proper so that's how can bus will be failed and uh, okay next uh, move on to the next 
So these are the user space tools uh, like uh, can utils is a command line utility that is used to test the can interface and to install the can utils in your working space. So we have to use the sudo cat app install can utils hyphen y and uh, we have the these are the commands uh, uh, we, example commands actually uh, uh, we'll be using in the to uh, test the can dump we can send display record generate or replay the can traffic here so here uh, can we have a help command we have a 960k board rate uh, in, in which we are working in the loopback mode so we are not communicating with the external can bus we are uh, rounding back from the trans receiver only and second is the 10800k and we are setting the db rate that is flexible data bit rate and we are using the flexible data on uh, configuration for this can protocol or can node actually so and other commands are can send commands we are sending the uh, uh, frame onto the bus other is the statistics link show so let's move on to the next slide so and these are the can util dumps actually uh, like uh, what if you are giving a can zero type can help it will show you what all or the what all are options uh, you have you can select using uh, by the can utils command loopback mode listen only one error or one one short error or fd known is known so these are the uh, can commands other is the you can set the board rate here you can set the uh, can dump you will you will send when you send a can frame this is a transmitter message frame and this is a receive to transmission frame and the scene per frame are the same and this is the example of the statistics can zero it will show you the about the can node uh, that is can state is the error active and uh, bit rate configuration what is the bit rate configuration these are the time to want uh, proposition segment phase segment and phase segment to and the synchronous jump bit and this is the 40 000, 40 megahertz clock frequency and these are the bus error arbitration loss errors and all are those things and other is the uh, receiver byte and the transmitter byte let's uh, move on to the next slide so i have okay if you have any questions related to the can protocol please uh, feel free to ask thank you all for all joining this session i hope i have covered all the insights and this session was useful for i hope and thanks again have a great day ahead thank you